to show how to make stuffies. I added to the calendar, so one Monday video per month is going to be like kids sewing, so stuff that's um, easy to do with kids or stuff that's easy for kids to learn. So sometimes kids just want to make a thing. I get that a lot with, you know, people will have um, some version of offspring that wants to make something and they bring them into the quilt shop and it's like, oh, well, okay, we have these massive quilts or we've got clothes or whatever, but that overwhelms them. So I always try to have these little panels in the store that make for easy sewing. Um, they don't have to be for kids, but they, it's something easy for a kid to take home. You just need some scissors, a sewing machine, some basic sewing tools, and you can make the cute little stuffies. The bonus part to this is if you want to make them fun, you can do all kinds of embellishments and stuff to them. So I made one of these once that had a mohawk. So I just took like some, um, actually I have one of them in here that has some fringe on his head. So, you know, you can do all kinds of little dressy up things or you can stitch on him first before you sew them together. You can give him little legs. You can do whatever you want to do with them. Um, the pillow that I showed you guys for Valentine's Day, the pillow with a pocket in it, these are fantastic for that because instead of stuffing them, you can just sew them together and then stitch them onto the pillow and now it's a pocket. So you could make this like the pocket part. So these little panels are great for that too, especially the one I'm gonna show you the demo on because you could make it into a, a pillow really easily. So, okay. so if you have youngins that wanna learn how to do this stuff, go get them. Um, I have, so I'm gonna show you what the panel looks like first. I took one piece off of this panel. So this is a cat stuffy. Okay, so it makes a kitty cat pillow. So here's the cat's face and here's the cat's tail. So we're gonna cut both of those out and sew them together. This panel has four cats on it. There's that one, there's this one, there's a Siamese kitty, and then there's the one that I'm gonna show you how to do because it looks the most like my cat. It's this one, okay? So what I did was I just took these two pieces off of the panel. The panel comes with all four um, stuffies on it as well as directions. So you don't need a pattern because all the directions are written on, the, on this. There's a couple of tools that I'm gonna show you that make it easier. You don't really need those either. You just need some scissors and a sewing machine. Um, but I am going to show you some stuff that makes this process a little bit easier and chances are you already have it in your sewing stuff anyway um, Okay, so a couple things we're going to talk about one is is fiber fill mm. um, I used to think that fiber fill was fiber fill was fiber fill Then I started buying this fiber fill from air light they are a um, a US based company so they make all their products in the States they make cotton batting and wool but not I don't think they make wool batting but they make cotton batting and polyester batting but they make this really fantastic so this is what the pack I will say that I have given them a little bit of grief over their packaging because well it's ugly so this is the extent of the packaging and it comes so shrink wrapped that you see it like this. It basically looks like a giant white hot dog when it comes out because it's super shrink wrapped so that it's um, easier and cheaper to ship so it doesn't take as much energy to ship it. They're also a very green company so they use a lot of recycled materials and um, there's just a lot of things about their company that uh, are in line with our company. So this is the brand of fiber fill we carry. The reason I like it is because it is very fluffy and and it separates really easy it's not really super stringy um, so you can make it really thin if you want to and thin and even so see how just sort of judging that around this is a really even piece of the batting the reason I like that is when you start making stuff that's smaller so for instance our little Passiflora mouse, she's got these skinny little arms. But you want to stuff them kind of really firmly so that they have some shape to them. So this fiber fill breaks apart really nicely so that you can shove it all the way down there to the tip of her arm. 
okay? And you can really do a lot of form fitting with the face because you can really get it into the places that you want. So this is the brand of fiber fill we carry now because I like the versatility of it. If you want your stuff stuffed more firm, then you just put more in there. And I'm gonna teach you some tricks to pack it in there so that you get it really firm. If you would rather have it be a little bit more squishy, then you just don't puff, you just don't, you know, stuff it as much. Is there a hypoallergenic fiber? I think this is hypoallergenic actually. Um, I think I saw that on the label. Yep, non-allergenic and washable. So I'll read you everything that's on there. It says this uh, fiber fill is manufactured using lightweight, 100% recycled polyester fibers. Um, ideal for all fiber filled products, stuffed animals, dolls, home decor, holiday ornaments, and the such. Um, Non-allergenic and washable. This is a 16 ounce package, so it's a pound. When you take, when you break the seal and let the air in, it just sort of, you ever bought a mattress that comes in a bag? It's like that. It just sort of expands exponentially. It's kind of cool to watch. Um, and it's made in Michigan. So, you know, it's a lot of different things that mean a lot to me. So, yes, you don't have to worry about the, the chemical compounds and stuff. All I did was I cut out these two pieces. You don't have to be perfect. I would say if you're going to err, err on the side of having a little bit of extra white because you're going to have a seam allowance. So I've got a face and I got a butt. And we're going to put the face on the butt. So here's the really groovy part about this is it's a nice, big, easy. These are the ones I definitely would start with because you don't have really sharp points or corners or any of that stuff. So if you're going to ta start talking about a first project, this is definitely the way to go. If you're sewing with a, with a small person, I would probably take a pencil or a pen and mark lines for your turning. Um, but first I'm just going to pin a couple of spots and I don't, I don't pin the hell out of it. I just, you know, pin a couple spots. So we're going to pin the four corners just because I am going to carry this over to the machine and do a little bit of, you know, stuff with it. So you want to get it as straight as you can, you know, printing fluid, printing on fabric, fabric is fluid. It moves just a little bit. Don't freak out if everything's not perfectly flat. So the pattern says to leave the whole bottom open for turning. I'm going to tell you why I wouldn't do that. It's really hard to stitch around the curves if you leave these open. So I would leave it open from about here to about here. It, once you get to where you're used to turning, you could leave it open even less, but this is, this is a good range. You want to have a continuous stitching around these corners though. And I, yeah, this is a Sharpie. I wouldn't normally mark with Sharpie. It's just what's nearby. And I made sure that my dots were inside the seam allowance so you won't see them anyway. So we just pinned a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna sew. And we're gonna do about a quarter inch seam allowance. You could do it slightly wider if that makes you nervous. The beauty of these really simple panels is that um, it doesn't really matter because there's no real detail around the edge. So I'm gonna sew with my, let's see, I'm gonna bump this over to about a quarter of an inch. Since, I, since you know, your fabric lays this side of the needle, I'm gonna use the edge of my foot as my reference point. So I'm just gonna drop the foot. I'm gonna do a tie-off stitch, or you could back stitch. And we're just going to slowly sew all the way around this panel. And people freak about curves and that's okay. And kids are gonna freak about curves too. Just go slow. So you can take a few stitches. I know that my machine has this groovy pivot thing. If yours doesn't have that, then you can just raise the foot with the lever and stitch around these curves, okay? And then when you get to the wider parts that are more straight sewing, you don't have to go zooming. You can just sort of slowly sew around the edges. If you don't have a sewing machine and you want to make this, you could do this by hand. Just do a nice continuous running stitch with a needle and thread and stitch all the way around. The thing about hand stitching it is you want to make sure that your stitches are close enough together that the fiber fill doesn't escape when you stuff it. 
So that might take a little bit of practice of getting your stitches close enough together. You just don't want anything to escape. So this is some pretty basic sewing. Steve's showing you a real close up of my fingers here. <laughs> So I'm keeping about a, a consistent quarter inch. You'll notice that it's a little bit wider than a quarter inch. I'd rather have too much than not enough. So when you're turning things and you're gonna start, you know, stuffing it, you wanna make sure that your seam allowance isn't too small because then the seam will come apart. So we're gonna stitch all the way back around to where this dot is. And you want to make sure that you tie off. You either want to do a back and forward or you want to do a tie off stitch, however that is, because you're going to kind of manhandle this just a little bit. So you don't want the stitches to pop out. All right, so that's about the extent of that. We're going to take our pins out. My makeshift pin cushion here. Now, if this was more of a curve, like if this ear was more angled, I would take some scissors and snip that in just a little bit. But this one's not like that. When, we start, when I start showing you the doll patterns, I'll show you some tips on where to snip them. But this one's not really like that. You don't have any really sharp angles, okay? So there's nothing to really, um, you know, aggressively snip. Now, here's another little tip I'm gonna show you real quick. Before you turn it, if you leave it right side up and take some steam -a seam tape, so this is quarter inch steam -a seam tape. It's sticky both sides, but it has paper one side. Um, the um, Apple stick will do the same kind of stuff. I'm just gonna take about a three inch piece of my um, steam -a seam. Make sure you keep the paper on or your iron will be sticky. And we're going to put the steam -a seam right here on this opening. And just make sure that you keep the paper on there. When you're working with a small piece, sometimes the paper will come off. If you're nervous about that, then put a hapless, you know, a piece of paper over top. <laughs> Oops, sorry. And we're going to rip the paper off. Okay, now, here's another little tip for turning stuff. Um, it seems weird, but hemostats are one of my favorite sewing tools. Lucky for you, the only hemostats I have in stock right now are the tulip pink ones, and so they are functional like this, but pretty like the stuff that she makes. So if you're not in the medical profession, you don't use hemostats all the time, basically they're tweezers that lock. So the inside of this has grip to it. You know, it's, it's uh, what's the word for that? I don't know, you know, it's, it's like uh, teeth like pliers. And when you close them together, you can lock them. Okay, and so now they won't come apart. The idea is, especially when I'm turning stuff, I get, I don't know what it is about turning stuff inside out that sends my anxiety through the roof. I don't know what it is, but normally when I turn stuff, I make DJ do it. And I don't know how he takes those giant gorilla fingers that he has and he can turn stuff like this a lot easier than me. So I use hemostats. So make sure they're unlocked before you put them inside the pillow. And then you find the furthest corner of the pillow and open them and put your finger in there don't lock it on your finger, it will not go well, and grab it, and then listen, lock it, okay? Then we're just gonna pull it right way out. Once you get that first turn out, the rest of it turns really easily. And I just kind of loosely, you know, fluff the pillow out. Oh, I forgot to bring my, my turning tool is in my toolbox, let me get this one out. I like this turning tool for this technique because one, especially for kids, it's got a good grip on it and it's easy to hold. So we're just gonna take this up inside the ear and poke it out. Um, the tip of this turning tool also has um, like a ballpoint end. So you're not gonna poke through your seam. So we're just gonna poke her little ears out and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna run it all the way around the seam. So make sure you turn all those curves out on both sides. Make sure her ears are pointy. 
because this fabric looks like my beans cat and she's got really cute ears. All right, so now we have the whole thing turned out. So now it looks like a deflated balloon. Now we have the steam -a seam on this side, so we're gonna glue that shut, <laughs> okay? But in the meantime, we're gonna stuff it. So we're gonna take stuffing and just keep stuffing it in there. Here's another time I really like this turning tool for two different reasons. Since the turning tool has a fat end and a skinny end, the fat end is great for poking fiber fill up into spaces. So here's a tip on stuffing your stuffies. You want to stuff the points first. So if you really want to get these ears looking like ears, you want to shove that wad of filling that you put in there up into the ears first, because that's what's going to give it the shape. If you just kind of put it all in the middle and then you know hope that it goes where it's going to go, it's not going to. It, it's just not going to do that. So I just you know stuff a couple of handfuls in there, and I stuff the ears first. I want the ears on this to be pretty firm because I want it to. They want them to stick up, and I want them to look like cat ears. Okay. All right, so now our ears are stuffed. Then we just keep ripping off handfuls of this batting and we'll just stuff it all in there. You wanna do the same thing with these corners, but since I'm not that worried about these corners being firmly stuffed, I'm just gonna push it down there in the corner. So I'm gonna fill all four corners. Then I'm just going to, you know, stuff it like, I don't know, like a turkey. And I don't stuff whole giant wads, like I don't pull off any more than, you know, a handful and my hands aren't that big because you want it to kind of separate in there. Now, if I wanted this to be a really loose, squishy pillow, that's about as much as I would stuff it because now it's nice and soft. If I wanted it to be more fluffy and filled, the other thing you can do is you can kind of fluff it before you stuff it in there. That's another thing I really like about this uh, this um, air light stuff is that when you stuff it and you fluff it up, you get that, you know how some stuffed animals are really kind of soft fluffy? You know when you go to the Build-A-Bear place and they let you step on the pedal and stuff your bear as full as you want it to be and sometimes you have a floppy bear? You can make a floppy bear with this stuff. It doesn't stay all wadded up in one big lump. And the way to get that effect is before you stuff it in there, fluff it like you're doing that fake snow that you do at winter time. Just sort of fluff it up like that and then put it in your pillow. All right. So I think she's probably stuffed up enough. You can close this one of two ways. Since we've put the steam -a seam in there, oh, and I'm an idiot. I put it on the inside, not the outside. So I need to put more in there anyway. Ah, oh, live TV. Um, I'm gonna put another piece of steam seam in there. So let's go pretend like I have some idea of what I'm doing because I'm a dope. So I normally do that, but do it on the inside of the thing. But I didn't today because, you know, people are watching it. So we're gonna pull up another piece of tape and stick it right here on this seam. So since we did a quarter inch seam all the way around, this will kind of automatically make a little seam pocket because all of it is um, folded up next to each other. So now you can't see it, but the tape is right there. It's stuck on there. We're going to put the two pieces together like this, like a soul. Oops, sorry, Steve. And then just press it and glue it down. So now you're at this point. It's glued together, okay? So you can either whip stitch, you can take a piece of thread and a needle and you can stitch this opening shut. I wouldn't only rely on the steam seam because that's not gonna last through washings and it's not gonna last through kids dragging it around. I would probably sew that shut by hand, but that's just because that's how I do stuff. If you don't wanna sew it by hand and you wanna sew it on the machine, that's okay. My thread doesn't match, but this will let you see how to stitch it. Come on, turn on. I'm going to move this to the middle position so I can see my needle. And you want to kind of push that fluff over to the side, and then you can just top stitch it. 
So remember a couple weeks ago I showed you how to use your, um, your stitch in the ditch foot to top stitch? You could do that right now, or you could just kind of wing it like we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do a little tie off stitch. If you use a matching color of thread, this isn't a big deal, but we've got blue thread. So we're just gonna slowly stitch this down. Make sure you get all the way back to where the opening started. And then we're gonna tie it off again. Okay, so now you have a stuffed pillow kitty face. It's a very cute face. So that is a pretty easy way to go. And plus, you know, for, for people that sew, you can make this in, you know, 10 minutes. But for a kid that got to make their own little kitty pillow, they really dig this. Because, you know, it's that sense of accomplishment. And it's a short enough attention span time that they'll probably actually do it. So that's how you stuff a pillow. So that's kind of the easy peasy get a thing done. I have a bunch of panels that we're gonna talk about on the sale. This is one of them. Um, I'll tell you the difficulty level on them. None of these, there's one that's a little bit challenging, but it's only because there's a lot of extra pieces to it, but it's a lot of fun. So if you're gonna sew with somebody who's never sewn before, I have, mm, let's say four that are easy, really easy like this, and then I have some other dolls, and then we'll talk about the tools. Do we have any questions we gotta talk about? Nope, everybody's good? All right, there we go. So if you have stuff, you're gonna have to you know, raise your hand. We'll get there. So I would definitely recommend the batting, the turning tool, and the hemostats if you're gonna do this process. Um, let's see, let me get my cheat sheet. And then like I said, stick around for some show and tell. I got some show and tell for you guys. So I'm just gonna run through the stuff that's on the comment sold sale so you can see the different items. The um, price will be up in the corner. You can do this as a comment sold or all of these items are on the website. Um, some people just like the ease of, of doing it as a comment sold, okay? Let me put these pins away before I spill them everywhere. Not that I would ever make such a mess. So, all of these projects, everything I'm showing you today is going to need fiber fill. So fiber fill is number 701. This is a 16 ounce bag. A 16 ounce bag is more than enough to do all four of the kitty pillows, even if you stuff them more than I stuffed them. Um, if you were gonna make multiples, then you know you might need some more. I think that fiber fill is one of those things that you should just kind of always have around. You'd be shocked how much you need it. I use it constantly. Okay, so fiber fill is number 701. It's $10 for a 16 ounce bag. Do you know how to flip them? You good? Okay. The next thing is the panel that has the cats on it. So again, there's this kitty. And I don't know where the panel went. Did I chuck it? Oh, there it is. Nope. Oh, oh, we have all of them. No, we don't have all of them because I only made one. The other ones I do. So this one has four kitties on it. It's got the calico kitty that looks like beans. It's got the black kitty. What's your black kitty's name? Pluto. Pluto. Rebecca's kitty's right there. You know, I don't know an orange kitty. I used to know an orange kitty. I used to know an orange kitty. He I used to like to sleep in, huh? Hogarth. Hogarth. You have an orange kitty, Hogarth. There we go. And then the cat that I grew up with looked like this. Her name was Panda. So you got four cats on this pillow. It's a one yard panel, uh, so it's $12. And all the instructions are on the panel. That panel, the kitty panel, there's three that are like that. So those are the ones I'm gonna show you first. The next one, is a farm animals panel, right? Yep, farm animals. It has a cow on it. Oh, that's the cow's backside. This is the cow's front side. And she's got ears and she's got horns and she's got, you know, hooves. The hooves are just a little bit pointy. So she, so see how firm we stuffed her? She's good and, you know, she's still squishy, but she's good and firm. So there's a cow on this panel. There is a sheep on this panel. Very cute. And the other thing, when Terry made this, she just really 
Um, she took a piece of, of um, if you want to learn how to do trapunto, this is a good time to learn how to do trapunto. You could take a piece of wool batting and put it just behind the face and see how she's just sort of stitched right around the face to give it a little dimension. You could do that and then you could trapunto his little face up there. Um, there and she did the same thing with his little tail. So you got a sheep and then you have a bunny and I think there might be a pig. There's a pig, but I'm not sure where the pig went. Yeah, I don't know where the pig went either. I don't know. There's not a chicken on that one. I think it was a pig. But here's the bunny. So like, see how her toes didn't get stuffed all the way? That's one of those things that, you know, I mean, you could mess with it now, but this is what I'm talking about where you want to take that tool and really stuff it up there into the ends. All right. So here's your bunny. And then there's a pig. The pig has gone MIA. I don't know. So the next panel that we have that is these stuffies is the Woodland Friends, I think is what that one's called. Yep, Woodland Friends. So on that one, you have the hedgehog. And then you have um, an owl that's reading a book that says wise guy jokes on it. Because he's a wise guy. And then you have a fox holding a flower. He's very cute. This would be a fun place to do some accent stitching or the trapunto technique. Or again, you can see how easily this would make one of those pockets for those gifty pillows. Um, if you want to do that technique where you make a pillow, I have some 16 inch pillow forms. It would be the perfect size for this to be the pocket. And I can send you a copy of the directions that I did on the Valentine's pillow. You just have to do a little bit of math for a bigger pillow. And you have a raccoon and he's got a big fluffy tail. He's very cute. So that's the Woodland Friends panel. Now we're going to talk about some dolls. So we have a number of doll panels. This one might be my favorite because this is Charlotte. So Charlotte, um, I can't remember the little girl's last name, but um, Charlotte was born with a cleft palate. And so she designed this line of fabric and all of the money that was raised selling this fabric she donated to an organization that helps kids with cleft palates. But this is what Charlotte looks like. She's got sort of long brown hair and glasses, and she is learning how to sew. And so she's actually designed a second line of fabric, but it's very cute. So the doll has, so here's where you wanna start doing your, you know, your firm stuffing is on these legs so that she looks like she's got shoes, but we didn't stuff her knees too much because then you can bend her little legs or she can sit. I think she's got a pin in her butt. Huh, Terry left a pin in her. <laughs> so now Charlotte's booty is just a little dangerous. Can you see, where's that pin? Oh, I lost it. I just stabbed myself with it. There it is. Yep, learned that one. I did that with a whole quilt once. Left the pins in there. Oh my goodness. And I found it, it was just one pin that was in there somewhere, like when I was putting the binding on. Mm -hmm. And then of course I go to pull it out of the dryer and I was like, so, and. Here's the bonus to Charlotte. Charlotte has a purse. And you can, and then the, this little label on here says, I smile because, and then you can write little words in there. And these are all of Charlotte's friends. And then there's a little poem on the back that Charlotte wrote about having a cleft palate. And then on the panel also is all the other little stuffies. This one doesn't go with Charlotte. Um, so she's got two little dolls. And she has a sewing machine that she can carry or that she carries around in her little purse. So that is Charlotte and it's for a good cause. So those are very cute, but I like how she sits in her, you can carry her around in a little purse or the little purse can be um, an extra little token for um, whatever little kid we make that for. On the cute train, this, oh my gosh, this panel is probably my favorite doll. This is the Boho Blooms Bunny panel. So on this panel, you get the bunny. The bunny has a dress, has a two, has a reversible skirt, and she has a purse. And the purse opens up so you can put little bunny things in the purse. My favorite thing about Boho Bunny, oh, and she has a collar, is her floppity ears. So she's got these floppity ears and little bows on her head. 
So all of these things come on the boho bunny panel and she's just adorable. So this one, the challenge to this one is going to be actually making the clothes. So the, this, all of this is written on the panel and you cut it all out and it tells you the directions. It's just making sure that you put them together right way, you know, put the right sides together because you kind of have to sew it inside out and then turn her. So Boho Bunny probably isn't gonna be a first project, but if you've done a couple of other stuffies, it's not that hard. Um, she is also stuffed pretty firmly so that she stands up and she can also sit. The cool thing about Boho Bunny is Boho Bunny has a second panel where you can make her her own quilt. So the panel actually has these two quilt blocks on it. So you can make her a quilt that matches her dress. So all we did with this was put some fusible fleece in it, sewed it together, turned it right way out, and then we tied it. So this quilt is tied, okay? You can also use this panel um, you could make a little doll quilt for um, a, a youngin that you have, or if you want to make a, a baby, you know, for a, um, like, a, um, um, like a baby stroller, that kind of thing. So it's the right size to make a tiny little, I think it's an 18 inch block. Or you can pick up multiple, ver or multiple pieces of this panel and then use the panel as cheater blocks and make a quilt. So we have the panel on our website. I'm not showing that. It, oh, I do have this on, on today's thing, don't I? Yeah, I do. So I have the panel on here, but we also have some coordinating fabrics like this one and this one that are on the website if you want to turn this into patchwork. Oh, your daughter's quilt can match her little doll's quilt. Yes, exactly. So you could do some really cute things. This is also a great panel if you want to practice some ruler work, if you want to practice some you know, machine quilting because you have this you know this cheater block that looks like it's patchworked you could practice some free motion quilting or you could practice some straight line in the ditch quilting because you don't have an actual ditch to hit you could practice stitching on the lines there is a lot of different potential with this one panel and it's only a two-thirds panel so it's like eight bucks i think right isn't that what it is yeah it's like eight dollars Next we have, next what we have is a cautionary tale. Let's just be honest. This panel is a dinosaur panel. And on the panel, you have one piece that says roar. We turned this into an actual little pillow and put one of those Kimberbell pillows in it because it's just the right size for that. So this panel has the word roar on it. Just chunk them back in there. It has a Triceratops, I, right? Yeah, Triceratops dinosaur in there with his little horn. Also a volcano because, you know, the earth was a very different platform then. Oh, look, the fuzz is sticking to it. There's a two-sided volcano, so you get both sides of those. And then you got a T-Rex. This is what happens when you have too little of a seam allowance and you get aggressive when you turn it. So instead of having tiny little arms, he has like <laughs> tiny little boobs. <laughs> yes. As if his arms weren't small enough. As if his arms weren't small enough, he now has just <laughs> tiny little boobs. Um, and this is why you stuff the legs first. So this dinosaur is a cautionary tale. He could be very much cuter, but he's very cute. So when we did the Valentine's pillow, somebody sent me a message and she wanted to make a pillow with um, the Super Dinos fabric, but she wasn't sure what to make the pocket out of. So I sent her one of these panels so she could make the pocket out of this. So you have the two sides of this to make the pocket with, and then you could just leave this piece open to stick stuff down inside your dinosaur, okay? So that's the roar panel. Next, we have the Passiflora mouse. She is just crazy cute. So on her panel, and she's only a two-thirds panel too, so she's not very much either. I'm gonna say she's like $8 as well. On her panel is her body. She also has little pants on. She's got little like red panties on. 
Um, her whole body, her socks and her shoes are part of her legs. And then she has a skirt. Now on the skirt, we added some of that double, um, the crocheted edged uh, bias tape. This is also on the website. This is a really fun little detail to add to all kinds of things. So we added it to the skirt, but you could add it to a quilt. You could put it on a pillow. You can add it to clothing. It's a lot of fun. So her little skirt has an elastic top, so you can take it on and off. And she also has poofy sleeves, which I adore. So she's got these little sort of like 1980s bridesmaid sleeves, which are kind of great. And she's got, you know, cute makeup and her ears are just adorable. So that's the Passiflora mouse. Then we have, this is probably the most challenging one that we have, um, but there's a lot of great little details in this. So this is the Sunday picnic basket. This is a large panel because there's a lot of stuff on it. And we actually have, I think, one or two things that hadn't even gotten made yet. So this actually comes with a picnic basket. So you make a picnic basket and everything I'm showing is on the panel. So you have a picnic basket. We put um, soft and stable in it so that the picnic basket would stand up, like be firm. So you have Mr. Frog, with his bow tie and his short shorts, and Miss Frog in her little dress. So all of the clothes are on there too. You got his little bow tie. She's got her shirt as part of the part of her body, and then she's got a little skirt on. And look how cute their feet are. So the frogs are going on a picnic. So at their picnic, they have plates. They each have a plate. Oh, and the backside says enjoy your lunch. They each have a napkin for their plates. They have a picnic blanket that they can sit on. They have chicken legs, strawberries. And then they have all of the stuff to make a sandwich. So you've got bread, the top and the inside. You have lettuce, you have a tomato slice, cheese, and oh, the top part of the bun. So you can make a sandwich. So you got enough to make two sandwiches. And then for dessert, you can't have a picnic without a slice of watermelon. So inside of these, so inside the watermelon, because then you could top stitch it, you could do all kinds of fun little details on this. And inside of the bread, we put more of that foam so it's squishy and it's got some body. The, um, the other sandwich stuff, we just put a little bit of like, um, like feather, like non-woven feather fusible just to give it a little bit more body. And these are all made the same way. You slap them right sides together, you sew almost all the way around, you turn it, you poke it out, press it. If you want to make it look really clean, you can then top stitch it all the way around because then you won't see the stitch parts where you closed it. It will just look like a design element. So that's a little trick too. Oh, they also have, which we didn't make this part because, and I don't know where the pieces are. They also each have a carton of milk, but I'm not sure what happened to the milk cartons. So this is not going to be like an hour project. It's going to be a little bit more time. And I strongly suggest this turning tool for this project but i mean they're so cute they're so cute and they all fit in their little basket if well if i wasn't being messy and just shoving them back in there but they all fit in a little basket so they can go picnicking that's that all right which what, how do we go on the bottom let's see sunday picnic rainbow zebra so this is one of the first stuffies we ever got he's the rainbow zebra this one, this has actually been in production with Cranston Quilt Works years ago. Cranston isn't even a company anymore. So QT Fabrics bought Cranston and brought back the Rainbow Zebra. So Rainbow Zebra is really cute because not only is he colorful, but his tail is fringed and his mane is fringed and he's got little ears. So this is the Rainbow Zebra. This, is, this one is a little bit more challenging than the cat ones. But once you master the cat ones or the woodland animals or whatever, this is a good one to probably go next. 
because you get the 3D effect, this piece that goes from the tip of his nose up to his butt is, a, is an extra piece. So you sew the two panels together, but then you also add this, and that's what gives him the dimension. That's what lets him stand up. Okay, so there's the rainbow zebra. He is also adorable. Next, for you Raggedy Ann and Andy fans, this one is also a cautionary tale. I'm going to show you what not to do. This is called Holly's Dollies. So they look very Raggedy Ann and Andy. She's got her little apron and her little, you know, um, Mary Jane shoes. And then this is Andy. And here's what happens when you don't put enough stuffing in Andy's neck. He's like headless neck. <laughs> so the way to get around that is you stuff the head and you stuff the arms. And then when you're stuffing the body, make sure that you put enough stuffing right here to keep his neck from, you know, being mostly headless. All right. So this is called Holly's Dollies. This is also a smaller panel. All this panel is, is her front, her back, his front, his back. That's it. So this is a good one to, if you want to step into some doll patterns that are a little bit easier. Next we have the Best Friends Forever panel. I really like this one for multiple reasons. One, there are four dolls on here. There's four little girl dolls. And almost in every other doll I have, I've had princess dolls and elf dolls and, and um, cowgirls and all that stuff. They all look like this. They're all blonde and blue eyed. Well, Charlotte's got brown hair. But these dolls are all different shades of color of skin and hair. So it's a very much, uh, it's a more diverse group, which I really appreciate that. Um, these dolls don't have clothes. They do have these sort of spindly legs that takes a little bit more stuffing, but they don't have any extra like clothes construction stuff. I will say the secret to making these is when you sew them together with your seam allowance, you want to make sure that you take a pair of scissors and you snip into these points like around her neck and around her little bun. Don't cut into the seam allowance, but cut close enough to it that the fabric can splay out and then you're going to get a better curve there like that. So these dolls, there's four dolls, and they each have a little purse, and they each have a little pet. Okay? So there's like some, one has a bunny, and one has a cat, and one has a dog, and one has whatever this other little animal, oh, this one, this puppy. I don't know where the other purse went. It's around here somewhere. But they each have a little purse and a little pet. And I think their names are even written on the on the panel okay so there's that one this one is one of my favorites and for obvious reasons this is called mod monsters so the monsters have panels so the monsters are all you know there's the front of the monster there's the back of the monster but the googly eyes are separate so you make the eyes separately stuff them separately and then stitch them on so they are sort of 3d eyes same thing with the mouth so the mouth gives it a lot of character and he looks just a little weird. You don't make the eyes go the same direction. You know, he's an alien. And then the other thing you do with this is his feet are heavier than the rest of him. So that when you set him on stuff, like a bookshelf or whatever, he'll sit up. So we put, I think she put rice or barley or something in his feet so that they have weight to them, okay? So this is one monster and then this is his friend. They have names too, and they're written on the panel, but I can't remember their names. And I like how his googly eyes sit up on spindles. So you sew the panel together, and then you stitch the little googly eyes on the top, and you stitch his lips on. I love these guys. He also has weighted feet. So those are the mod monsters. Next we have, let me make sure I got these in order here. Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. So this is my Noah's Ark panel. This all comes on a panel, so you have the boat. And then the pockets are also separate, so you have a pocket on both sides of the boat. And in the boat, you have Noah holding a chicken. The designers did Noah no help on his hair. 
You have Noah holding a chicken. You have a giraffe, a zebra, a cow, an ephalump, a pig, and a sheep. And I think that's everybody. So this panel also has a lot going on, but it's not hard because you sew the pockets first, you put the two sides of the panel together and you stuff them and the pockets all become, they all happen when you turn it. And then the, the animals, you do the same thing. You cut out the two animals, you sew them right sides together and then you stuff the bottom. So see, we just sort of hand stitched that bottom together, okay? And then all the little animals sit in the pockets and just kick it on the boat with Noah. So this would be a really fun little baby toy because then, you know, it's always fun to, to teach kids which animals are which and what sounds they make and all that stuff. This would be a simple afternoon project. Then we have, let's see, after Noah, we have the Halloween, this, this one is so cute too. This one comes with, this is a Halloween basket. So you've got the, um, the pumpkin and we used uh, I think decor bond inside of this so it's not you could put the um, soft and stable in here too to make it really stand up firm um, but we just wanted to have a different option so people could feel what the different baskets feel like so this has decor bond inside of it and then for inside the basket you have a cat so here's the front of the cat and the back of the cat and I love his little pointy ears but my favorite part of this, and this was a missed opportunity, you got two bats and their wings move. I forgot I was gonna put crinkle paper in their wings so that they made noise when you did this because you know full well that I do this to people in the store. So there's two bats and a cat in a basket. And all of this comes on one panel. So this one's number 716. Yes, there's one, well, I mean, you could make two if you want to back it with something else, but um, yeah, there's not enough room in the pockets to have two of everything. But you could if you want to just put like a solid color on the backs, and then you could make them face each other. So I don't know that they have faces on the other side. Yeah, you could, because you could make one this side and one this side if you put a solid fabric on the other side, but then it wouldn't be, you know, like a doll. Or you could get two panels and make double animals. Oh, but Tina said to use squeakers in the bats and oh. uh, there's crinkle paper in the bat wings. Squeakers in the bats! Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to find some squeakers. Some squeakers. You know, Frogger, or not Frogger, but our other dog chews the squeakers out of all of his toys, so if I get him to do the work, I could just steal the squeaker before he eats it. <laughs> all right, so those are all the panels we wanted to show you because they're lots of fun. And especially if you've got to do some sewing projects, I mean, you know, you're still doing home ec from school, from home, right? So, what's our crinkle paper? Uh, crinkle material. Mm -hmm. And then, as far as tools, we talked about the turning tool. I know I've talked about this a bunch of times. It really is one of my favorite tools for a number of reasons. So the precision turning tool is 717. You will find all kinds of things you need this for. The steam seam which I lost, oh, here it is. This is one quarter inch steam seam, which is what I, the size that I like to use for closing up stuff. I like this just because it's sticky and so you can stick it down and then take the paper off and stick the other side down and then iron it and it will glue them together. Um, I like this for small projects like that um, where I'm not gonna have to stitch on it a whole bunch if I'm gonna do like applique or things like that, then I use um, Apple Web because it doesn't come up your needle as much. But this is great for quick fixes. Also, you don't like hemming your pants? Pop some of this in there, iron your pants together, and it'll at least last you the day. So, you know, it's better than when we used to hot glue them. And then the last thing I have to show you is the hemostats. So these are five inch hemostats. These are a good size for doing dolls and whatnot. I also have 10 inch hemostats, but they're literally like that long. And so they're really only good for turning bag handles and things like that. Things where you really have to get far up in there. 
these are a good size. This is what I use. This is the same size I used today. Yep. Okay. So that's everything I have to show you on the sale. So that's what I have for today's video. I hope you're inspired to try making a panel um, stuffy in some way. So I hope everybody has a good week and, I, you know, try stuffing something. It'll be all right. We'll see you later. Bye.